Hello there. Good morning and welcome. It's nice to see you. Um, this is Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy. Looking forward to our live lesson today where we're going to be looking at the topic of handicrafts. Interesting topic. Lots of language, lots of vocabulary, some practice, a listening task and lots, lots more. Looking forward to it. Listen, let's get right into it. Hello all of you, it's nice to see you. How are you? Welcome to, well, today's live lesson. As I mentioned, we're looking at this topic. Handicrafts and how to talk, well, fluently about handicrafts. So I'm looking forward to getting stuck in and to getting going. Um, lots of interesting stuff. We'll be um, together for about an hour and a half today looking at lots of language. So a very quick hello to who's who's over here. Let me have a look who's in here. Uh, Yosra, good morning. Keith, you've been missed. Thank you, Yosra, very kind. It has been, yes, three weeks, I think, since the last live lesson. Maria Akta, nice to see you. Saleh, Samina, um, Sabrina, nice to see you as well. We've got Vamshi. Hellos. Hellos, Keith. Hellos, Vamshi. <laughs> nice to see you. Lovepreet Kawo. Nice to see you. Hello. Tran Huang and Tu. Great. Ka Tini. Lots of people. And from Sri Lanka, Vihangi. Great. I hope you are well and that you are all well. Very excited to be here. Um, Listen, I just wanted to share with you something. I got a message the other day, which was from a, a student, which was a very nice message I wanted to share. It was from Sunaina Kawa. And he said, um, Dear Keith, thank you so much for doing so many things for all of us. I was not good at speaking and I settled on your course. Nice language. I settled on your course, meaning I chose your course. Nice um, and I would say, I think this course is one of the best courses I've ever come across. Wow, that's very kind. Just by going through all your lessons, I got eight in speaking. Thank you once again. Fantastic. Great. So Naini Kawa, I'm very, thank you very much for the comment. Very pleased that you, um, you got that score. Um, yes, because some students ask me, you know, does the course, can it help you? I know it can help you get a seven, but can it help me get an eight? It depends. If you're already at the seven level, then it could help you get a, 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 a eight. If you're at the six level, then probably not going to get an eight because that's such a big leap um, with one course. You would need more and more practice. But anyway, the course he's talking about, of course, <laughs> is this course. I help speaking success over where? Over there. Um, get a band seven plus, um, which is on my website. You can go and check it out if you're interested. Where is the website? The website is over here. It's called um, keithspeakingacademy.com. So although we are broadcasting on YouTube and Facebook, um, I do have a website called Keith Speaking Academy, and you can get lots of information there about IELTS as well as about the course. Um, let me show you very briefly if you'd like to see. That's not what you want to see, is it? That's my Facebook page. You don't want to see that. <laughs> you want to see this. This is the website. Um, there's information about the IELTS test on the format, evaluation, topics, part one, part two, part three, etc. Free live lessons you can get. So if you watch these lessons, um, you can get the PDF of the lesson notes from here. Shortly after the lesson, last uh, time we did socialising, right? So you can just download the uh, the notes here and you can join the library. Fun, interesting. But all the other PDFs are down here, right? And you can get these for free, absolutely free. Um, a whole myriad of topics you would commonly get on IELTS speaking. So lots and lots of stuff there. And you can get my online courses here. Um, 
Good, let me come back. <laughs> Which leads me actually to make a to tell you something because you may have noticed today is Thursday. Duh, yes, Keith, we know today is Thursday, which means tomorrow is. Yeah, but what colour? That's right. Tomorrow is Black Friday, right? Loads of people going mad in the shops on Black Friday. Um, so I also have an offer for you. I have an offer called the Black Friday Bundle. <laughs> What's the flat Black Friday Bundle? This is my Black Friday Bundle for you, right? Um, what I've decided to do is to put my three courses, that's the IELTS Speaking Success, uh, the Fluency Course and the Library, all together in a bundle, discounted. It's about 20% off um, all of it. It works out at $33, which is going for a song, I think. <laughs> anyway, um, the links are in the... We'll put the links in the notes. The links are on the website. Um, the links are also go if the moderators, if you can put a link in the chat, that would be great. I'll tell you more about this later as well. So you can find out all about the bundle, okay? My Black Friday bundle. I have to jump on the wagon with Black Friday. <laughs> Excellent. Good. That's it. Let me close all of those things up. Let's uh, let's see how you are. Of course, we've got lots of people joining. Fridays are pretty beautiful. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes. Great. How are things going for your new course, Yosra? The new course is great. The, um, the speaking interactive course uh, is going well. We've got... I think around 200 students um, who are studying at the moment, week by week. We have a community. Uh, this week, they're doing podcast partners where they're sharing audios with each other. They've got small speaking groups where those who want to practice can, can practice more. So I hope it's going well. I think it's going well. Mm, great. I have a few people there on the course. Yes. There we go. Mingle. How do I, how do I pronounce that one it looks like the premier league it is the premier league ming legend i already brought the interactive course so helpful and lovely excellent now the interactive course is closed for enrollment at the moment but will probably open in february next year yes um great the pdf link well just go to the keith speaking academy um, and go for the free live lessons and you can get it there yeah excellent good Angelina says, hello, Keith. Thanks for your wonderful lessons. You do a big job. <laughs> very, very nice. Thank you very much, Angelina. Very kind. Listen, um, let's jump in. Let's jump straight in and have a look at um, the following. We're going to go in and look at some vocabulary. If I remember correctly, do I, rem Ooh, do I remember correctly? Let's have a look. Um, this is what we're going to do today, right? We're going to look at handicrafts, okay? So just give give you an outline of what's coming. Um, I'm going to begin with some vocabulary, look at different kinds of uh, expressions and words on this topic. Um, then we're going to do question time. <laughs> question time, I'll ask you a few questions. Um, we'll look at some of the answers there. We're going to do a listening task today. And a listening task we, is... I'm inviting an old friend back um, to come and do the listening task with us. Uh, that will be quite interesting to see. We'll also then be doing this. I'm going to show you the toolbox. My toolbox is just where I, I share a very simple tool to help you learn English even better. Um, and then we'll finish up with some expressions around arts, crafts and handicrafts stuff like that right so we're going to begin do, 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 handicrafts with vocabulary right that's the first thing we're going to do today Vroom. strange stuff going on vocabulary where do we begin let's begin with this one if i put myself in a little circle Vroom. okay here's a question for you handicrafts i blank handicrafts is it make or do What's the correct verb here? Is it make or do? 
let me know in the chat box. Tran, how long is the live? It's an hour and a half. Now we've got lots of interesting answers. Some people say make. Some people say do. Some people say make. Some people say do. <laughs> interesting, make. A lot of makes, but I do notice quite a few do's. But nobody actually has the right answer. <laughs> Can you guess? Wow, look at that. Okay. Somebody says I make handicrafts. Somebody says I do handicrafts. What's the meaning of handicrafts? Good question. Handicrafts are things you make with your hand. I'll explain in a moment. Um, yeah, handicrafts are, just in case it's not clear, are these things, right? Can you see the spoon, the bowl, the little, the, the kind of the embroidery or the quilt, quilted thing? These are handicrafts. Okay, the answer is both. You can say make or do handicrafts. That's the answer. Why? Because handicrafts, right, are basically handcrafted items. But also they are activities. So a handicraft is something you make by hand. For example... this candle right this candle has got all these stones was made by hand it's a handicraft it's an item it's a thing so you make a handicraft if it's a thing however right if a handicraft can also be an activity right it can be an activity if it's an activity you talk about to do some handicrafts so the answer is both make and do. If you're talking about the item, the thing, let's call that a thing. Item is the better word, but if you like a thing, a handcrafted thing, then it's let's make some handicrafts. If it's the activity, then it's let's do some handicrafts. Simple, right? That's the answer. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Claudia said, I thought of make because you do with your hands. So you're right. So you do make a handicraft if it's a thing, right? Um, but if you're talking about the activity, I like handicrafts, an activity, then it's more, um, then let's do, let's do some handicrafts. Now, we talk about handicrafts. You can say handcrafts as well. I think in Britain and England, we handicrafts is much more common and looking on the internet handicrafts seems to be much more common that's the word i would use but both are in the dictionary both are correct right handy crafts or handcrafts okay um we also talk a lot about arts and crafts um especially in school um, and when we're talking about the subjects or the activities, let's do some arts and crafts. But again, arts and crafts can be the items, but it can be the activities. So you can say, let's do some arts and crafts, or I like doing some arts and crafts, um, or I like doing craft work as well, if you're talking about the activity. Um, but you could make some crafts as well. I want to make some crafts or bake some handicrafts. Okay, great. Now, different crafts or handicrafts. Different kinds of crafts or handicrafts. I tend to use handicrafts rather than craft um, because craft has a second meaning. Craft is also a kind of a vehicle. 
like an aircraft, like is a, is a, is a, or, a, or a sea craft, like a boat. So I think when we're talking about art and handicrafts, I prefer to use handicrafts. If we're talking about activities, so what are the different activities? You can have, for example, weaving, right? Now, weaving, well, I'll show you. Weaving, carving, pottery, and embroidery, right? I'll show you them. <laughs> I'll try and show you them. Weaving, carving, pottery, embroidery. Now you're thinking, that's not very helpful, Keith. Maybe not, but let me try and show you some pictures. Weaving, there you go. In many countries, the traditional weaving method looks like this, right? You're making maybe some clothes or a rug or a carpet and you weave the material together. Um, nowadays, a lot of people have machines to do weaving. Carving is normally with wood, but it can be on stone. So you take a kind of a knife and you carve the shape or the figure out of the wood. So carving, again, it's a very traditional handicraft they have in many countries. And you can make some magnificent wood carvings. Like I've got a chess set that is made out of wood carved, craft, um, you know, skillfully. That's the word, skillfully. Um, pottery, that one, of course, is this. Um, a lot of people have tried pottery. It's, it's a lot of fun. If you haven't tried pottery, it's great fun. You use the, the kind of the mud, if you like, or the clay with water. Make a shape, often like this, and then put it in the oven to heat up um, and to go hard. And then put your flowers in it if it's a vase. <laughs> embroidery is it's what my grandmother used to do. She loved embroidery. She would put designs like this. So you would have a thread and needle or a needle and thread and she would kind of sew a pattern into the cloth or the fabric. And when you create this pattern, it's called embroidery, right? That's embroidery. Excellent. Good. Um, so those are the different kinds we've got there. We've got weaving, carving, pottery, embroidery, and probably others, actually. Probably some others. Um, Adela, for example, tells us knitting could be. Knitting, yep, it's kind of handicraft as well. Yep. Amin says, I used to do embroidery. Why did you stop? <laughs> not, not enough time. Great. So some of you like handicrafts. That's great. Any others? Knitting? Yes, we've talked about knitting. Yep, that's probably the other, the other big one. Now, these are activities, right? If you're interested in finding out more about handicrafts, um, again, there is a website by, well, Wik Wikipedia. Hello, <laughs> Wikipedia. I've heard of Wikipedia. Um, if the moderators could share the link if you're interested, you can just go and have a look. Um, I'll show you here. The website on handicrafts, it's basically Wikipedia. It gives you some nice language to talk about it. it talks about artisanal handicraft, handmade. It talks about the tools, the skills, crafting, handcrafting, arts and crafts, right? Very popular in America. I think in England as well, right? mass production. It's a really useful page to pick up lots of vocabulary to talk about this. Talks about it at school. There's a list, right? A list of modern of modern common handicrafts. Oh, there's lots of them. Batik. I remember doing batik painting when I was in Malaysia. Crotch, crotch, crochet is another one. So guys, go and check it out. Um, you can see lots of uh, information, really, it's a very short page, but lots of very, very useful language for this topic. There you go. <laughs> Adrita, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so um, we've talked a bit there about activities, right? 
But what about if we're talking about crafts, handicrafts as items? What are the things? Well, there are um, <sighs> vases. I know, I know, in America they say vases, vases. In England we say vases, vases, baskets, candles, bags, wallets, jewellery, all of this stuff, right? Um, I mean, I can show you a couple of pictures. I think I've got some pictures. Still, have I got more pictures? I think I've got some more pictures. Stay with me. So vases, we looked at. This could be a vase. Baskets, um, like this. Not like that, like this. Baskets which have been we woven, have been woven to weave, have been woven. Good English. Thanks, Keith. Um, you've got jewellery and all sorts of trinkets like this, right? You make little bags, um, maybe wallets, purses. Yeah, jewellery more is the earrings. I mean, jewellery is very popular, right? When you go to the flea markets, you get earrings, necklaces, rings, nose rings, lip rings, all sorts of rings. You've got it. That's the one. <laughs> right. So handicrafts, right? Very, very interesting. Word families. Let's have a quick look at word families, because as you may know, I'm very keen on learning word families. When you learn a word, I think it's really useful to learn the noun, the adjective, the adverb, uh, the verb, the different forms of the word, right? And this is called the word family because they're all a big happy family. So a craft or a handicraft we've talked about. So looking at the word craft um, can be an activity or a skill, right? So some people say teaching is a craft, right? He's very good at his craft. Um, some people say that, you know, being a musician is a craft. Um, playing music can be a craft, an activity or a skill. To craft, then, as the verb, is to make something skillfully. Um, I've crafted a piece of music. Then you make something skillfully. Um, I've crafted this candle, right? I'll give you a simple example. I've crafted because I love this present perfect tense because it's so present. It shows you, look, right here, look now, look, I've crafted this candle. It's a lie. My daughter crafted the candle. I've crafted this lovely candle, right? To make skillfully. Uh, crafty actually is a bit different because crafty means clever or cunning. Clever and cunning, let's say. Cunning means, you know, sly. Clever, but a bit under the radar, going round the corner, cutting corners. Clever and sly. Craftsmanship is skill, is your skill, right? I admire my daughter's craftsmanship, even though she's not a man. Still call it craftsmanship. Why don't we call it craftwomanship? I guess in a year or two we will. Craftsmanship. I admire your craftsmanship. Um, you could say something like that. I admire her craftsmanship. Skill. Right? Or ability. I admire her craftsmanship. Great. Those are, where is it? There it is. Word families. Okay. Just say the word with me. Craftsmanship. Because craft, craft, right? There's a t, but it's a t. Craft. But that sound drops when we say craftsmanship. There's no t. craftsmanship. Craftsmanship. I admire her craftsmanship. That's it. Lovely. Very, very good. Brilliant. Word families. Um, so I've got a quick question. Does anyone make any handicrafts? Leave me a comment. Let's find out if anybody makes any handicrafts. And whilst you're commenting, let's put on a bit of jazz. Oh, 
Oh, spot on, Adela. Elision, well, good. Are you a teacher? You must be. <coughs> Ruya says, definitely. Should be craftswomanship. Should be. Fidan used to make beaded necklaces or bracelets. Nice. Um, oh, where you, where have you gone? Craftsmanship, good choice. Sue. Sorry, that I was just about to click on Ahanaf. Ahanaf. I only type my legal writings, right? There we are. Come back. There you go. I make pencil cases with ice cream sticks. Brilliant. Ice cream sticks, I suppose. More than one, right? Uh, Jiffy Rani. Yes, I do embroidery. Nice. Uh, Premier League. Again, I made a vase last year and it was wonderfully made. <laughs> it was wonderfully made. Yes, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but <laughs> it was wonderfully made. Uh, great. Uh, good question. Uh, yeah, crochet is without the N. It's like this. Good for good question. So crochet is a kind of handicraft. Yes, it is. Crochet. Brilliant. Uh, Sumug, I made a pot using clay. Lovely. Lovely. Mohan, Mohsen, Mohsen says in Iran, the most important handicraft is traditional carpets. Right. Um, yeah, I would say it's the traditional carpet. If you're in the singular, say it's is the traditional carpet. You're referring to a singular thing. Otherwise, put it all in the plural. So I think what I would say more naturally, I would probably say the most important handicrafts are traditional carpets. Yeah, I would tend to put it in the plural. Fantastic. Thank you, Mosen, for sharing that. Great. Anybody else? Number 25. <laughs> Number 25. Uh, Ho, I'm learning embroidery. Great. Richelle is, I'm trying to make my first embroidered handkerchief. Very nice embroidered. Very good. Um, <laughs> Gaurav, I think coffee. Maybe not. Maybe not a handicraft. <laughs> Um, Nikita says, I have ability to make handicrafts. Tell us more. What do you make, Nikita? Vihangi says, I used to make freight. I used to make. It's the same thing. Keep it in the plural because I'm sure you made more than one, right? Um, so keep it in the, plur in the plural. I used to make fragrant candles. Don't put craft. You don't need to add craft. We understand it's a craft. Um, better to keep it short and simple. Lovely. I'd love to see some pictures of these, right? Um, t t how do I pronounce that? TT. I make painted bookmarks. Interesting. Great. In the plural. Lovely. Very, very nice. Wow. There's lots of things. Um, I'll do a last one from Layla. I've, I have crafted. <laughs> Present perfect. Whey! I have crafted some jewelers oh dear don't craft jewelers because the jewelers are the people if you craft <laughs> they won't be very happy i think you mean jewelry and vases and always make a variety of crafts excellent let me just help you with the jewelry yeah a jeweler is the person <laughs> i crafted the person poor guy i i've crafted some jewelry nice excellent that's brilliant. Very, very nice. We have a lot of talent in the room today. <laughs> okay, let's move on and talk about places to buy handicrafts. Okay, and some just a bit more vocabulary. So in England, we have flea markets. And a flea is like a little fly, right? <laughs> flea market. The flea market, I understand, if I remember correctly, comes from the French Something like Le Marché des Pousses. Maybe any French people watching could help me with this. The, it's le, le Marché des Pousses, something like that. And, it, and we've taken that into English. And the flea market is 
basically a, a street market that sells lots of handicrafts, right? Normally bags or or secondhand stuff um, or cheap knockoff stolen stuff or pirated stuff, all sorts of stuff. Um, it's normally cheap and bags, clothes, shoes, jewellery, the usual stuff, right? Flea markets are very popular in England, lots of them, basically like a street market. And the stuff that you can buy, right? This is interesting. We've got a lot of words for cheap handicrafts um, can be called... So cheap handicrafts can be called bric-a-brac, right? Say that with me, bric-a-brac, bric-a-brac. I love buying bric-a-brac, say that. I've got lots of bric-a-brac at home. Or trinkets, trinkets, say that, trinkets. The flea market has lots of trinkets. Or knickknacks, knickknacks. In fact, we don't say nick, we say knickknacks, knickknacks, knickknacks. It's a very colloquial word, but IELTS speaking, you can use colloquial English. Don't use slang, but you can use colloquial English. Um, you can find knickknacks at the flea market. Nice, good. So the all of those you can say brick brack trinkets knickknacks, <laughs> knickknack paddy whack give a dog a bone my old man came rolling home. That's a song that we literally learn as children in England. Knickknack. Hmm. Ornaments. Um. So ornaments and adornments. These are uh not colloquial. These are normal words. Um. So. Maybe I should make, make this clear. This is more informal, right? Whoops. So trinkets is informal. I think knickknacks is informal. Ornaments is fine. Ornaments are decorations, right? Like, ta-ta, this is an ornament. It's used to decorate the house. Uh, an adornment is used to decorate the house. So these are the nouns. to decorate, to adorn, right? Uh, the noun ornaments or adornments. So all of those things we saw before, like the vase, the vase, the vase, the jewelry, not the jewelry, um, the pictures, the embroidery, that can all be, those can all be adornments or ornaments. Can you say that? Ornaments, ornaments. When you're practicing pronunciation, do exaggerate, right? Don't go ornaments. Do exaggerate because that will really help getting your mouth working. And when you exaggerate and then when you speak normally, it sounds good. Ornaments. Adornments. Yeah, that's it. Imagine you're an actor on the stage um, and really do go and exaggerate. Ornaments. Adornments, knickknacks, trinkets, bric a brac, bric a brac. You can see how much our lips move, right, in English. Okay, lovely. Um, what else do we have? I have a couple more, a couple more words, and then we'll move on. Um, just to finish up, these are about skills for making your own handicrafts. So these are great adjectives, right? Dexterous, which means skillful with your hands. So some of you who say, for example, we've got over here, I crafted paper planes. I'm assuming you did more than one. I crafted paper planes. Then you are dexterous because you have a skill with your hands. So you must be dexterous. Um, so that means uses your, let's say your hands skillfully, skillfully, dexterous. Use your hands skillfully. It's like skillful, 
right? Let me try and give you a definition with um, adjectives. It will make it better. Skillful, one L. Skillful with your hands. Skillfully, two Ls. Skillful, one L. <clears throat> English, mad. Dexterous is the adjective. Nimble fingered is the same. Handy is the same. Notice handy has two meanings. Handy can mean convenient. It's handy to have the shop next door. But I'm handy it means I, uh, I, I, I am dexterous. I can use my hands well. Other words, of course, creative, innovative, innovative. Notice it's Although it's O-A, it's a uh, a uh, innovative, innovative, artistic. I've got an artistic bent. It's a nice uh, expression. That means you have some artistic uh, inclination. Mm. You've got, you're, you are artistic, basically. It means I am artistic. I've got an artistic bent. Um, <clears throat> my father or my mother said it when I was very, very young and I picked up I picked up this drum and started beating the drum. Bum, 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 but in rhythm. And they said, ooh, he's got an artistic bent. I think it was my mother said, no, he's just noisy. Bang, bang, bang. But my dad said, no, no, no. He's got an artistic bent. <laughs> he's got some artistic flair or talent, maybe. Talent is a good word. <clears throat> so I wonder if you have... I'm sure a lot of you have got an artistic bent. And when we talk about handicrafts, the opposite, right? We've got, so handicrafts are handmade goods. Are handmade goods. The opposite, of course, is mass-produced goods or machine-made goods. Machine-made goods. Machine-made goods. Say those with me. Mass-produced goods. Machine-made goods, handmade goods. Good. Handmade is different from the handmaid's tale, right? If you're watching that on Netflix, that's a different handmaid. <laughs> okay, great. That's it. Lovely. Lots of um, vocabulary. I'm done with vocabulary. I'm done with vocabulary. Let's just have a look what you're what you're up to. <clears throat> hey, Yan Wei Dong. Hello, nice to see you here. I've got very clumsy hands, right? So you're not dexterous. Um, great. Anything else people have got? <laughs> Rosie, enjoying. Great. Rosie, now ah, that's a cool avatar. Rosie, mate, my mum is handy because she is creative at knitting. Yeah, very, very good. Just to help you a bit there with with because you don't need of. Because she is creative at knitting. Nice, Rosie. Good. <laughs> Great. Some good ones. Um, good. I'm just picking up some other useful phrases. A dexterous artist is nice. Quote Kim. Very nice. Yes. Mo Sen, uh, can we say we made the carpet by weaving? Yes, not in, by, by weaving. He's dexterous with wooden vases. Um, yes, I would say, right, I would just make it really clear. I would say he's dexterous when making wooden vases, right? Um or he's dexterous at, he's dexterous at making. Yeah, you could say at as well, when or at. A bit like skillful at, right? Right. Painting, is painting a handicraft? Batik painting is a handicraft? It could be, it could be. I think it's, it's considered under the umbrella of art and crafts. So painting is more art. Handicraft is normally something you could sell, right? It's practical. Normally, 
Yeah, I mean, but what about an adornment, Keith, and uh, ornaments? Those are not things you... Hmm. It's a difficult question, right? Um, I think it depends on maybe the use of the painting. So, you know, paintings in an art gallery, we don't call handicrafts. You don't call the Mona Lisa, the Mona Lisa, a handicraft, no. But a nice little batik painting that is used to decorate your house could be a handicraft. Okay. <clears throat> um, can we say... Where have you gone? A clumsy girl without any artistic bent? Yes, absolutely. You can say that. Yes. San says handicrafts are expensive than machine-made goods. Oh, you mean they're more expensive? Yeah. Are they? It depends. I know what you mean. Very often they are more expensive. Yes, they are very often. Good point. Excellent. Okay. Guys, let's have a, as we move on, let's have a cup of water. Badab she be do be do be do be bum bum bum. Okay, what's next up after vocabulary? Next up after vocabulary is question time. What do I mean by question time? I'm not sure. I can't remember what I mean by question time. Oh, yeah, I don't mean you ask me a question. It means I'm going to ask you a question. I have another question for you. Um, huh. Okay, I've got this question for you. Should we encourage children to make handicrafts? What do you think? Give me a comment below. Let me know. Should we encourage children to make handicrafts? Yes, but they need to be under supervision. Very nice. Very nice. I like that. Meal says, uh, definitely, definitely a, a typo, but well done. Because it will improve their skills in an artistic way. Okay. Very nice. Zara says, absolutely. Children should mostly be encouraged to make handicrafts. When you say mostly, it sounds like a little bit, yes, but not too much. But if you say absolutely, I think absolutely children should definitely be encouraged to make handicrafts, right? Nice, good. Uh, Hauer says, well, as far as I can tell, yes, because it's a way of earning money for your livelihood, for their livelihood. Livelihood is a great word. Well done. Very, very good. Nice. I'll just correct your typo. Excellent, Hawa. It's a, it's a, it's a way of earning money for their livelihood. Okay. Um, Man Manjeet, I got an eight point five in speed. Wow, wow. Congratulations. Three. Well done. How did you do that? Eight point five. <laughs> well done, Manjeet. Fantastic. Love it. Um, Lev says it will develop their art skills or their artistic skills. Yes. Um, sure, it will improve much creativity. Yes. Yes, it makes them unleash their creative mind. Ooh, that's nice. They can unleash their creative mind and develop their artistic arti artistry. Develop their artistry. Artistry here sounds a bit strange, right? I'm going to take a few examples from you, right? They can unleash their art, their creative, you said, creative mind. Or they can unleash their artistic talent. Um, brilliant. I like that. Thank you. Let me add some other things that you said. Um, 
they can develop their artistic flair is another one or bent so flair and bent is kind of talent that they've got right what else did you say there's a lot of other ones that came up um yes as far as i can see uh it's a great way to earn a living right that's a common expression to earn a living um somebody said i think howard said earn money for livelihood is is also okay earn a living might be a bit more common yes without a doubt it develops their fine motor skills and artist and an artistic bent yeah yes so it can develop their motor skills that's a really good one motor skills so motor skills are how they move um i guess when you say fine motor skills it's the small movements with hands when you build and construct construct things yep it'll make them more dexterous it'll make them more dexterous someone had what else why does it not come on <laughs> there you go right brilliant what else have we got they said yet yeah, it helps keep our traditions intact yes nice so we would say it helps keep our traditions traditions intact yeah very very nice keep your tradition intact lovely lovely language i think these need to be a bit bigger don't they just a little bit let's take one more will this recording be saved kavad yes it will it will be saved yes in in youtube and facebook here's another expression yes absolutely making handicrafts can be a rewarding activity that ramps up the children's creativity and cultivates their imagination. Great. Yes. Yep. So it ramps up. So to ramp up is to build up. It ramps up or builds up. Their creativity. Is that what you said? Or cre the, the children's creation. Creativity, we want to say, right? It ramps up their creativity. Um it's a rewarding activity that's also good like it okay nice some nice expressions we can use there right with all with, for all of those questions earn a living develop their motor skills make them more des de desperate dexterous helps keep our traditions intact um, it ramps up their creativity uh, it's a rewarding activity nice brilliant okay Good. I'm going to move straight on. Because of time, I would like to move on and do a listening task with you, right? Now, the listening task, um, I've actually invited a friend. <laughs> I've got um, an old friend of mine that I'm sure you know. Some of you may remember. Um, he's going to come in and do a speak for a minute or two about handicrafts which are popular in his country. Um but first of all, I am curious, which handicrafts are popular in your country? Which handicrafts are popular in your country? Let's find out first. Chelly, first time in. Welcome. English he from Korea. Hello. <laughs> Powerpuff Girl. Oh, I hope you're okay. I'm sure you can you can follow it later. So most popular mm, pottery. Okay, interesting. Paper planes. Paper planes. That's interesting. Remember, you probably want to keep, if it's a thing, keep it in the plural. Um, this one embroidering on clothing right also adam says embroidery batik says teresia 
Nice, Batik. Diana says making handmade jewellery. Okay. Masks, says Kinkini. Interesting, masks, yes. Uh, Artyom says weaving rugs, weaving the rug, right? Ceramic vases, interesting. Batik says Zizi, nice. Carpets, carpets, again, I'll put it in the plural, carpets. Pottery from Apoor, okay, lots of them, interesting. Mm, Olga says knitting. And as we've been told, <laughs> Marjan repeats, carpets in Iran are very traditional, right? Carpets are very traditional, great. And uh, ah, Ying Ju Chen says wooden wood sculptures. Wood, I would say wooden, because you probably want it as a. Here, I think the adjective wooden is better. Wooden sculptures. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much for sharing those guys. Really interesting. Which handicrafts are popular in your country? Okay, so I want you to listen, right? And I want you to find the answer to this question in the listening. Which handicrafts? Are popular in the speaker's country and why okay that's the question are you ready <laughs> yay we're ready okay here is the listening my old friend this will make some of you laugh <laughs> here we go Yo, which handicrafts are popular in my country? Well, that I think is a really interesting question. I think handmade jewellery is probably one of the trending handicrafts in the UK. I think, yeah, the ease with which you can buy and sell it online has also boosted its popularity. You can get all sorts of intricate designs or even minimalist designs using a wide variety of materials. Yeah, I suppose, right, the fact that many pieces of jewellery also have a personal touch adds to their appeal. Recently, yeah, I bought my jewellery a bracelet at a flea market, you know, one of, on one of those bric-a-brac stalls that sells all kinds of trinkets and she loved it she said it was unique and beautifully crafted i think handicrafts make a lovely gift yo check it out <laughs> i love it some of you are like that's not keith who is that stan the man those of you, I saw Steve Roger followed me. Those of you who followed me for a long time will remember Stan the Man. Um, he's my doppelganger. <laughs> he's my twin brother, so to speak. Um, Stan the Man, talking about, well, handicrafts in the UK, of course. Um, great. Very, very interesting. <laughs> Thank you for the comments. So what was the answer? Um, which handicrafts? are popular in the speaker's country, in Stan the Man's country. <laughs> Somebody's going to steal Stan the Man. Right. We've got lots of answers here. Um, somebody says jewellery, handmade jewellery, unique and beautiful. Luthia, alter ego. Exactly, exactly. Um Handmade jewellery is one of the popular handicrafts in his country. Nice answer. Good, full answer. Um, Mariam says wood carving. Mm, mm, not wood carving, but handmade jewellery. Handmade. <laughs> handmade jewellery because it boosted its popularity. Mm, you're halfway there. Handmade jewellery. Handmade jewellery because... Let me see if somebody else has got the answer. Yosra says they are trendy in the UK. They have intricate designs. Good, good. Yep, Zhong, you've got that. Yep, you've all got handmade jewellery. Perfect. Jeanette as well. Nice. 
Yep, you've picked up the variety of materials. Okay. Ah, here we go. Yes, Kana got the answer. Jewelries or handmade jewelry, because they can sell and buy online, that has boosted the popularity, right? That has ramped up the popularity um, because you can buy and sell them online. That was the other reason. Yes. Also, as you say, because they're unique, they're beautifully crafted. Um, great. OK, well done. You've got you've got the answers, basically. Now, you've got the basic answer. Mm -hmm. So it was jewellery, um, beautiful, handcrafted and can be bought and sold online. Next, I'm going to ask you to listen again. But this time, if you can zoom into your screen, um, I'd like you to listen and read and fill in the gaps. There are five gaps. For example, I think handmade batik, blah, 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 is one of the trending handicrafts in the UK. I think you know number one, right? Very simple. Have a listen and fill in the gaps for number two, number three, number four, and number five. Okay. Excellent. That's what I want you to do. Let's listen again. As you listen, you can see and fill in the gaps. Are you ready? Let's do it. Yo, which handicrafts are popular in my country? Well, that I think is a really interesting question. I think handmade jewellery is probably one of the trending handicrafts in the UK. I think, yeah, the ease with which you can buy and sell it online has also boosted its popularity. You can get all sorts of intricate designs or even minimalist designs using a wide variety of materials. Yeah, I suppose, right, the fact that many pieces of jewellery also have a personal touch adds to their appeal. Recently, yeah, I bought my jewellery a bracelet at a flea market, you know, one of, on one of those bric-a-brac stalls that sells all kinds of trinkets, and she loved it. She said it was unique and beautifully crafted. I think handicrafts make a lovely gift. Yo, check it out. <laughs> Yo, right, great. So let's have a look. Um, we've got a few answers. Yuko says jewellery and boost. OK, um, good. We've got number three, appeal. Good, excellent. Number four, oh, store. Mm, it could be, but it wasn't, but it could be. Yeah, I see a lot of you have said stores. Ah, huh. it was actually a different word. Not stoles. You're very, very close. Incredibly close. And number five, anybody? Crafted. Xiong Beiji with those beautiful dogs. Yes. Oh, Olga is very close. Olga, you're extremely close. Well done with number four, but be careful with number two. Saba, you're extremely close, but be careful with number four. Fidan, you're extremely close, but be careful with number four. <laughs> oh dear. Can anybody get number can anybody get all of them? Oh. Lasley, you're extremely close, but be careful with number four. No, I don't think anybody's going to get it. Ooh. Oh, oh, Nui Fam, you are so close, but be careful with number three. <laughs> right, let me put you out of your misery because you're so close, all of you. OK, I think handmade jewellery. OK, let's put it in capitals. Handmade jewellery is one of the trending handicrafts 
handmade jewelry double l excuse me um is i think the ease with which you can buy and sell it online has also boosted not boasted but boosted its popularity you can get all sorts of intricate designs da, 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 da. i suppose the fact that many pieces of jewelry have a personal touch adds to their appeal attraction right their appeal is the attraction so that was another reason they're popular right is that the many pieces of jewelry have a personal touch he bought Ju his julie his wife or girlfriend um, a bracelet in one of those bric-a-brac bric -brac stalls stalls not stores but stalls <laughs> It has the dark L, stalls. She said it was unique and beautifully crafted. Yes. Whoops. I think hand handicrafts make a lovely gift. Okay, well done, all of you. You were all extremely close. Well done. Nice. Good. <laughs> I'm just going to show you this again, just to point out some of the interesting collocations, right? Um Remember these notes over there, over there, these notes you can get in a PDF off the website um, shortly after the class. I mean, normally about three or four hours after the class because we have to edit them, upload them, blah, blah, blah. So later tonight or maybe even tomorrow, you can go to the website. Do remember the website is here. Just go to the free live lessons. Click on the free live lessons and you can get the you can download the PDF here from the latest lesson. OK, just to let you know. So interesting uh, collocations. Handmade jewellery is another one to boost its population. Its population. <laughs> Where am I? Um, Ireland, 1850. No. It boosted its popularity. So to boost popularity. Intricate designs are very detailed designs. The opposite, simple, is a minimalist design. So minimalist, like minimalist design in the house or outside architecture, very simple, right? So one is complicated, one is simple. Intricate, complicated, minimalist, simple. Have a personal touch, right? It's a nice expression. It has a personal touch. You can say a person has a personal touch or the handicraft has a personal touch. This doesn't have a personal touch. But if she wrote her name then or my name, it would have a personal touch. Um, it adds to their appeal. So to make it popular, add to its appeal. We talked about flea markets, right? Street markets, bric-a-brac stalls um, in the flea market. Very common. Trinkets again, remember, that's quite informal, but a nice word for cheap handicrafts. Beautifully crafted. Remember when you're speaking to use these adverbs. Extremely close. Beautifully crafted. It really it's such a simple way to increase your vocabulary score and to make you sound just more interesting, but also more complex vocabulary. Beautifully crafted, right? That's it. Okay, that, that's it. Those are the some of the collocations, if you like, that you might find here. Excellent. Nice. Good. So what's next? I think I know what's next, if I remember correctly. What's next? Let's have a look. <laughs> Question time we've done. <clears throat> Listening task we've done. Toolbox. Ah, well, if it's the toolbox, this is where I'm going to share a tool with you that can help you with your English learning. Well, if it's the toolbox, then it must be time for this.
the last time I showed that, somebody said, Squid Game. It looks like Squid Game, right? But it's not Squid Game. It's Toolbox. So Keith's Toolbox. These are very simple tools to help you improve your English, spoken English particularly. But I came across a very interesting website the other day. Now, you may know that I'm a big fan of the BBC. Um, I listen to the BBC a lot. I mean, it's on my phone. I've got the Sounds app, BBC Sounds app, and you can listen to the radio anywhere in the world and a host of podcasts. But that's not the tool. I've gone across the pond uh, to America. In English, we talk about the pond being the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> yes, I, I've gone across the pond to America and... Um, I had a look at the VOA website. I don't know if you know Voice of America. And for a lot of you who are immigrating or studying in America, obviously American English may be more interesting. Um, you know, the difference between British English and American English, it's quite small, right? It's it's 95% the same language. Accents are different. Some vocabulary is different. A little bit of grammar is different, but not much. But the Voice of America has a special learning English part, department maybe, and I didn't know that. And I, I stumbled across their website, um, Learning English with the Voice of America, and thought it was very interesting. So I'd like to share it with you. Um, it might be useful for you. The, the website is learningenglish.voanews.com. Again, moderators, um, if you can, if Sarah, you're here and... Uh, Khan or Paula, if you can just share the link in the, the chat, that would be great. Um, I'll While they're doing that, let me show you directly what this looks like. Um, and the reasons I like it, I like it because it's split into levels. So you can look at different uh, levels like beginner. There's materials for beginner, intermediate and advanced. There's lots of listening, which I'm a big fan of. To improve your speaking, you should be listening more and more. Topics, very common topics you'll get on IELTS. And there's a there's a grammar section, which is... The grammar section is not very systematic. It's kind of a bit potluck, but still interesting. Listen, let's have a look. Let's have a quick look. So this is it, Voice of America Learning English, Bitcoin City, El Salvador, aims to build the world's first Bitcoin city. Really? Okay. Um, if you come down, right, let me just show you. So you've got this beginning level, right? So you've got activities or videos um, looking at some very common topics, right? Budget cuts, great topic to look at. Um You've got things around new words, pronunciate, pronunciation, pronunciation. But then you've got intermediate level. And again, look at the topics. Art and culture, right? We've been discussing a lot of things around arts and culture today. Um, you've then got advanced level and you've got different things there. But if you have a look, let's have a look. Arts and culture. Let's see what they've got there. Intermediate level. Just to give you an idea. Native Americans and the... Oh, it's Thanksgiving, right? Was that this week or last week? Can't remember because I'm not American. Whoops. Sesame Street. I used to love Sesame Street when I was a, a child. Sesame Street has its first Asian American puppet. Brilliant. Look, it's Bert and Ernie. Which one's this? This is Ernie, right? Ernie. Hello, bird. Hey, bird. What's happening, bird? Ernie, will you go to sleep? Okay, bird. Time to go to sleep. I love Sesame Street. Um, but what's great here, right, is you've got a listening. The children's television series Sesame Street is getting ready to welcome a new friend. Ji Young is joining the neighborhood filled with puppets. That's quite slow, isn't it? I think that's quite slow, but it's good. It's very clear. And then, yes, you've got the script right here, the children's television. So you've got the script you can follow. It highlights vocabulary. Um, brilliant. It's good. I think it's, it's really nice. You've got the full script. So you can listen. 
You can build on your vocabulary, but they also give you help with the vocabulary, right? At the very, very bottom, words in this story. Words in this story. So I, I think it's great. I think I like the idea they've got different levels, beginner level, advanced level. You may be up into the uh, advanced level, and that's great. They do have a grammar section as well. Um, and if you're a teacher, let's teach English. They've got things for teaching as well. Okay. So that's it, basically. I just wanted to share that with you. I think it's a very interesting website, some nice materials. Great. Anything else? Other comments? Today is Thanksgiving in the USA. Whoops. Wow. Come on, Keith. My American friends would never forgive me. Um, fortunately, I don't have many. Um, happy Thanksgiving if you're celebrating. My guess is if you're American, you're probably not watching this. <laughs> um, your English will be good enough. But yeah, maybe some of you are over in America and you're celebrating Thanksgiving. Excellent. Good. They're not as good as the BBC. Ah, it's very interesting. You can download the app. Oh, right. Good. They have an app as well. Brilliant. Yes, Yosra, I do. I used to, but not anymore. We called this character Senjed. Ah, okay. Right. Okay. Brilliant. Good. So that's a tool. That's my um the tool in the box. Now, um, I'm going to move on. What's next? We're going to finish up with another another activity. Let me come back. Toolbox. Da -dum. Come on. Expressions. Now, this is interesting because I racked my brain for expressions, um, for idioms, to talk about arts and crafts. And I couldn't find any. And I went on the internet. And all of the idioms about arts are not talking about arts. They're using the words like, a, a, um, what was it? A painting or a picture speaks a thousand words or um, to paint everybody with the same brushstroke, which is not talking about art, but it's using art, art words. So I just wrote down expressions. These are not idiomatic. They're just some expressions that could be useful, right, to talk about this topic. Let's have a look at some. If we're talking about um, different activities, for example, right, um, we might say, for example, we're talking about weaving. Weaving. It's a lot harder than it looks. You can use that for any expression. For pottery, it's a lot harder than it looks, which means it's more difficult than you think, right? Crochet, it's a lot harder than it looks. Another expression which I like, which is a good one for this kind of activity, to while away the hours is to spend a lot of time on an enjoyable activity. Enjoyable activity. I can while away the hours knitting or doing crochet. I can while away the hours painting or doing a batik painting. So while away the hours is to spend a long time doing something you enjoy. Fiddly. It's quite a fiddly thing to do. I love this word, fiddly. Fiddly means it's difficult because it's intricate and detailed. So when you are you need to be dexterous, then you need to work with small things like, right? For example, if you're trying to, um, let's say you've got a disk drive. I'll try and show you bigger. Or not disk drive, mobile phone, right? Better example. You've got, whoa, mobile phone. And you decide to open the phone. I know you shouldn't, but if you do. And then you're trying to fix it. And you need a small screwdriver. And there's lots of little pieces. And you need to pick them up. It's very difficult. It's very difficult because it's fiddly. It's fiddly. It's there are too many small things. My hands are quite big. I'm not very dexterous. 
So it's quite difficult to do. So fiddly just means it's difficult because it's small. I guess that's the closest definition. Difficult because it's small. Or it deals with small pieces. Right? That's the kind of idea. So it's quite a fiddly thing to do. Difficult because it deals with small pieces. So you may say, a lot of people say, um, I think I think sewing is fiddly. Not seeing. <laughs> sewing. Sewing is fiddly. Embroidery is fiddly. Uh, is fiddly. Right, embroidery, you've got the needle and the thread and it's so small, that's so fiddly. Okay, you need patience and perseverance. That's a lovely PP, it's a great alliteration. Patience and perseverance. I like that very much, almost poetic. You need a steady hand. So a steady hand is where your hand doesn't move. Again, this is literal, not idiomatic. You need a very stable hand. If, you're, if your hand is shaky like this, you can't do it. So things like sewing, embroidery, crochet, you need a steady hand that can move softly, smoothly. We talked about the personal touch, right, earlier, to have the personal touch. Many handicrafts have a personal touch. Normally, that is things where they put your name on it um, or they write something for you, specially for you, right? It really means customised for you, customised. That's what it really means, to have a personal touch. Um, and local heritage, I mean, we did talk about preserving the tradition, um, but also local heritage. The heritage is the tradition, the, the wisdom, the buildings. It's, it's everything, the culture. It's much wider, I think. So the local heritage um, is a really nice collocation to have as well. Okay, so I didn't come up with any idioms, but these expressions can be quite nice to use. Use. Great. Let's see, any other questions, any other comments you've got? This is absolutely true. Creating wooden, wooden sculptures um, is fiddly. It is fiddly, yes. <laughs> that painting was kind of jaw-dropping for me. Interesting. Fatima, that's great. I can while away the hours learning English. Lovely, great. I'm pleased to hear that. <laughs> great. What else have we got? Anything else? Um, Sophia, nice to see you, Sophia. How can can we say stable hand? You need a you need a stable hand. You can. I think more common is steady hand, but you could say stable hand. Yes. Mohammed, no, I don't do I don't do Zoom group meetings. I'm afraid. No. I can while away the hours doing nothing. Yes, you can say that. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, very good. <laughs> saying sewing is fiddly. Well, saying sewing is difficult. Yes. Fiddly is always with your hands, right? It's always something to do with your hands. Um, calligraphy is a little bit fiddly. Right, heritage. In French, you have patrimoine. Ah, the patri yeah. patrimonio, la patrimonia in Spanish as well. Um, yes, similar words. Great. Sewing is a daunting task. It is indeed. Yes, I don't sew. Right. Now then. Um, okay, we're coming to the end. Now, unfortunately, I have not had time to do a Kahoot. What? And I can see people like, no, Min EPL says, 
Kahoot, I'm really sorry. I've been rushed off my feet. I've been snowed under with work, swamped. I've been up to here with work and I have not had time to do a Kahoot. I do apologise. Um, but don't worry. We will be back. I um, I'm going to make the PDF of all of the notes today and you can go and study that and um, practice and practice. Let me remind you, I was going to mention something to you, right? Remind you about the website. It is keithspeakingacademy.com. Um, if you follow Facebook, then yes, we're on Facebook as well, the Facebook page at keithspeakingacademy.com. Um, I've got a Black Friday offer for you, and this is the Black Friday offer. It's the bundle, the Black Friday bundle. Um, and basically, Khan, Paula and Upsara, if you could share the link in the in the chat. This is on the website. Um, it's actually, it's, it's on the Teachable with my other courses. I've got several courses, right? So what I'm doing is the link will take you here. I'll just show you. For Black Friday, this is today and tomorrow. Um, and also today, tomorrow and Saturday, only three days. I've got three of my courses. This is only for Friday and Saturday, but you've got an early bird. You can get it today as well. You can get it right now if you want. Um, so I've got the IELTS Speaking Success, Fluency Course and the Library, all three of those together, which normally cost 22, 22, 44, 49. Um, and I'm doing them for $33. So there's a, a lovely discount on those. You can go to this page. You can press the buy now if you want to get all three courses. Um, and then you can go in and basically you do the payment through the channel here. Um, you can pay by PayPal or credit card and then just go through, make the payment and and that's it. Dead, dead, dead easy. It's the Black Friday bundle. The links are in the chat. I will send them out later as well. Um, do remember that this video is recorded, right, on YouTube and Facebook. So you can come back anytime to my YouTube channel or the Facebook channel um, and watch this video and look at the links in, in the, the notes there. If you're on YouTube, do remember, of course, subscribe, turn on notifications. You'll find about, out about my upcoming videos. So um, the, what was I going to say? The, the, the what? The live lessons. Next week, we don't have a live lesson. The week after, so in two weeks, will be the next live lesson. Next week, there will be a recorded video on the Saturday so I am with you virtually every week. Next Saturday, um, not this one, but next week, next Saturday, there's a recorded video. And then in two weeks, we'll have the next live video. So listen, that's going to be it for today. I hope it has been useful. I hope you have learned lots of vocabulary, got some ideas to talk more confidently on this topic of handicrafts. Do come back. You can listen again, pick out the language, go to the website, Keith Speaking Academy, download the PDF for free, get that, and you can carry on practicing to your heart's content. You can while away the hours learning English and preparing for IELTS speaking, okay? If you feel like you want a course, something more systematic to follow, um, that really focuses you, go and check out the bundle, the Black Friday bundle. You can get access today, but also Friday and Saturday. Then it's finished. The offer, um, it's a very, very nice discount. You get three courses all together. Um, go and check it out. It's cheaper if you're thinking about it. Um, if it's right for you, go ahead. Today, Friday and Saturday only. That's it the Black Friday bundle. It sounds like a, a film from Netflix, right? Okay, that's it. Final comments before we go. Where are you from? 
I'm from Manchester in England. Great. Thank you so much for um, joining me. If you're taking the test very, very soon, best of luck. I'm sure you'll do a fantastic job. Believe in yourself because we all believe in you and your ability. I certainly do. I'm sure you'll be great. OK, see you soon. Take care, my friend. All the best now. Bye bye. Cheerio.